Hi, Michael. Hello, Manager Isaac. How are you today? Oh, everything is fine. Good to hear that. Do you want me to do anything? I just have some questions for you. Ah, uh, yes, please feel free to ask. You're a new worker, right? So why have I always noticed you're looking at your watch and counting every minute to home on the dot every day? I mean, you just have been working here for two weeks. Shouldn't you stay and watch how others work? Oh, that's just because I have done all my tasks on time, and I had experience in this area before, so it didn't take me long to get used to it. Oh, do you mean we're not as good as you to have done the work on time? And we don't have enough capacity for you to watch and learn? No, I never say that. Please don't misunderstand me. I just want to say that's because I always come to the office 30 minutes earlier than others and work at lunchtime. And I've watched co-workers during working time to learn about their experiences. Huh? Why do you have to come earlier and work at lunchtime? I remember that the company doesn't pay contract workers that much. I didn't ask for it, did I? No, no, that's just because recently I've been quite in a hurry. For what? Is it because of your personal issue? Yeah, I'm preparing for my wedding in the next two weeks. Your weddings? When? I hear nothing about it. Well, I haven't told anyone in the company. <laughs> now I understand why you never go out for lunch with your co-workers. Yeah, I still don't get too well with them. Hmm, that's also another issue that I want to mention. Yes? I've received some anonymous comments that you are antisocial and slightly eccentric. That's not my words. I just repeat what they said to me. I understand, Isaac. That's might because I hardly speak to anyone, unless I deem the discussion meaningful related to work. Or when I have a question to ask them. And I do things alone all the time. <laughs> I understand now, Michael. Preparation for a wedding is so stressful, right? So, when will you invite us to your wedding? Invite who? Oh, such a silly question. Of course, you have to invite everybody in the company. Well, the problem is my fiancé only wants to have a small intimate wedding with relatives and friends. So we only budget a small amount for about 50 guests. Oh, I got it. We do not deserve to be your friends. No, no, Isaac. I don't mean to say that. Hey, show me some respect. Call me at my address. I'm sorry, Manager Isaac. I just want to say that I really want to invite co-workers, but my fiancé maybe will get mad at me. Moreover, the wedding venue we reserved has enough space for a maximum of 60 people. And now it's too urgent to change places, so it won't be enough place for everyone. Oh, come on! You're the breadwinner. You have the highest power in the family. Decide it by yourself, not by asking your wife. But... I don't want to hear any excuses from you. If it concerns space problems, you can change the place or invite fewer of your friends. Well, not bad intentions, but I don't think you have that many friends. <laughs> Sir, it is too difficult for me. So, I just advise you on how to get well with your co-workers. 
don't refuse my good intentions. If you do so, I will be so mad. Hmm. I will announce this to my fiancé and will invite everyone tomorrow. Ha <laughs> ha, good. I'm waiting for it. Ah, one more thing, Michael. I'm listening. I need you to do me a favor. Tomorrow morning, I have to report to leadership on the company sales report for the past two years. But I have an important golf appointment this afternoon. So, can you make the report for me? But it is a lot of statistics and documents to read. It will take all night. So what? But today, I have scheduled to try the menu from my wedding at the restaurant for my fiancé. Hey, Michael, you have to understand what's more important. If you take this chance and show me your capacity, I may consider you for a higher position next time. But my fiancé... Oh, don't worry. I believe she will understand for you. Just say you do it for your guy's better future, or something like that. Okay, I will text her to postpone the appointment. Very good. You get better every day. <laughs> I'm glad you're different from the former employee in this position. What happened to him? There's nothing important. Don't care about it. Yes. You're really well balanced. Thanks to my dedicated guidance, right? And don't worry about your wedding present. I will buy you the most expensive things you want. Yeah, thank you for that. Well done. Now make the report for me. Yes, sir. Hey, Michael. Yes, I'm here. Tomorrow's a big day, huh? How do you feel now? Oh, I'm over the moon now. I feel like the luckiest man in the world. I've dated her for ten years since we were in high school. And now my biggest dream is going to come true. Ha <laughs> ha, good to hear that. But you know, married life will be completely different from that imagined. Do you see how I am from a handsome and easygoing, become a bad-tempered and boring man like this? <laughs> You're so funny. So, why do you text me this late? Do you need anything? Well, nothing much, but about your wedding present. Yes? Is anything wrong? I know that I promised to buy you the most expensive things. But, as you know, I'm preparing for my promotion, since my sales report received good comments from the CEO. So, I'm really busy this whole week, right? So, I totally forgot to buy it for you. Oh, I understood. Don't worry about it. That's fine. Anyway, I didn't expect much. Phew, glad that you don't mad at me. I indeed read you correctly. Keep up the good work. I won't let you down. Haha, <laughs> I hope that too. Ah, one more thing I want to demand of you. Yes, what is it? About the about seating at tomorrow's wedding. I know that I'm an influential person to you. I know it. So, therefore, I believe that I should be set up on the front line, right? What? I don't really get your point. Isn't the front row usually reserved only for family and close friends? Yes, that's right. We're good friends, aren't we? Look how much I've helped you in your work. I know it, but isn't it too much? I don't think our relationship is that close. You are my boss. 
And I'm your staff. That's all. Nothing more and nothing less. Oh, don't say that. You make me sad. Listen, I just need a chance to show every employee I'm a friendly boss who always helps and supports new staff. Then in my promotion meeting, they will say nice things about me. The company's leadership will get more impressed with me too. But what's all of that thing related to me? Ha! <laughs> you are so dumped! The fact that I'm in the front row shows that I'm important to you. Co-workers will see it and find curiosity. Later in the thank you speech to the guest, how you will thank me for helping you. So give me a chair in the front row, and I'll give you some privileges. Oh, I see. But I'm so sorry, I can't help you. This is my wedding, and I just want it to be the happiest day of my life. Not to be an occasion to get a promotion, or anything else. Don't be so silly. I know that you won't let me down. No, sir. It is too... It is too intelligent, isn't it? I understand that you have already accept to the agreement. Okay, then we'll deal with that. Ha <laughs> ha! No, I didn't agree to anything. Tomorrow is going to be very fun. I can't wait for it. The groom should go to sleep soon to get ready for earlier tomorrow. Sir, please listen to me. I'm looking for your speech. Remember to say beautiful things about me. Ha <laughs> ha! Bye! Sir, I can't do that. Please, answer my phone. I'm sorry, but I can't do as you requested. Hello, manager. What do you want? I just received the announcement that I've been moving to work down the factory, but still a salesman. I just want to confirm again if it is true. Ah, uh, yes, I decided on it. But sir, you know that I have to achieve monthly KPIs. Then so what? If I have to come to the factory... I won't have a chance to meet new customers and sign contracts. Moreover, if I do extra work in the workshop, there will be no time to call customers. Michael, don't waste my time. What do you want to say? Well, I just want to say that your decision is not unreasonable. Oh, come on. I just want to give you an opportunity to show how good you're. Didn't you say you have experience in this field and are better than all of us? Then show me. No, I never said that before. So now you mean I'm a liar? No, that's not what I mean to... But... Why did you do that to me? I did nothing wrong. I still finished all my tasks by the deadline and made no mistakes. Oh, really? But you didn't follow your boss's request. What are you talking about? I always follow your orders. Oh, wait. Don't tell me that was because of your seat at my wedding. Finally, you got it. You agree to give me a seat on the first row, and then what? You placed me to sit with all those normal staff. But, sir, I never agree with that. Ha! Nonsense! I didn't see any message saying you won't do it while I was talking to you. Only once, but it was after we finished the conversation. You did that to mess up with me, right? 
No, manager. I didn't want to mess up with you at all. That was because every time I'm about to say it, you take my word for it. So now, do you say I was impolite? Please, don't try to take what I mean in a bad way. But after all, that was just a personal issue, and you can't bring it to work. Why can't I? If anyone asks the reason why, then I would say that the problem was you. Many employees complain that you're malicious and tricky when you steal customers from them. No, I never do that. Who said that? Don't worry about the witnesses. I have a lot. Ha <laughs> ha! Somebody here is willing to please me when I promise to consider them to become the team leader. How? How can you do that? You are abusing power. Hey, down your tone. Your tone grew insolent here. I didn't force you to accept that job transfer. You can quit your job if you don't want to do it. You always have options. No, I will do it. Then shut your mouth and pack your stuff. Yes, I get it. You are becoming more and more disrespectful. Huh? What are you talking about? Seriously? Oh, don't pretend you're innocent. Why didn't you come to my promotion party last night? What party? I didn't know anything about it. How dare you say that? I clearly informed you about that party two days ago. Scroll up and you'll see the text. Hmm... Sir, I don't see any text from you since the last one about my job transfer. Are you blind? I texted you right here. Wait, where is it? See? I didn't know anything about that party. Oh, it's still your fault. Huh? If you had a good relationship with your co-workers, they would have informed you. But it was you who put pressure on them that if they talked to me, you would notice them. What? Where did you hear that? Just one day after you transferred me. On that day, I went to the office because I forgot to take my notebook with me and I heard you talk to them like that in the meeting room by chance. I just gave them some advice and they have the right to choose if they do it or not. They won't do it to you if you're as nice to them as I am. Take a look at yourself. So, what do you want from me? Well, since you are unsuitable for the company culture and not actively participating in the collective activities, your salary will be cut down in half. What? You can't do that just because I didn't attend a party that I didn't even know its existence? You're talking too much. Either you work for half the salary or quit. Enough! How dare you talk to me like that? Do you want me to cut off your commission too? Enough is enough. I can't stand your irrational and arbitrary decisions anymore. Then what can you do? Transferring my job was bad enough, but now you find every reason to make me quit is the straw that broke the camel's back. Fine, I will quit my job. But I won't let you live in peace. <laughs> won't you let me live in peace? So what are you gonna do? You are nothing but a worthless person. Remember when you forced me to make the sales report for you? I have found some interesting points. What's wrong with you? You've suddenly gotten so bold. Just go back and follow orders as always. Haha, <laughs> that's too late. I discovered that since he became a manager, the report has revealed many suspicious signs. Huh? Nonsense! I was going to endure and let it go because I thought I couldn't fight back because I had no support and needed this job. But I don't care anymore. 
I won't work at a company with a toxic environment and an autocratic boss like you. Hold on, just wait. Luckily, I've already made a separate file that records all those suspicious signs. Let me see. I've discovered that most of the contracts you sign are installment contracts. However, when I contacted these customers, they all said they had paid you in full. What's even weirder is that all these contracts are paid in installments on the same day every month. That... that was because I had sent messages to my customers to remind them to pay me on the same day. Yes, that's the reason. So, how can you explain the money you received from Mr. Stefan, but you didn't sign the receipt to give to the customer and return the money to the company? Mr. Stefan? How can you know? Did you collect that money for personal expenses? Huh? What are you talking about? Don't you talk about investing in stocks every day? And the company you invest in is going downhill? Because of this, you were constantly angry with us all that week, right? So, what does this have to do with you? Well, I just wonder if you use that money to invest in stock and withdraw a monthly amount to pay interest on the contracts. How... how can you know that? Haha, <laughs> I have to thank you for suggesting me a partner. Me? Who is your partner? Do you remember Roger? How do you know him? It's just that when you mentioned the former employee at my position, I was curious why he quit, and you didn't seem to like him so much. Then suddenly I saw his phone number on the card visit left in the drawer. I called him and learned that he was also pressured to quit his job because he had discovered what you'd done. Michael, please listen to me. I just borrowed that money. I will return the full amount to the company soon. I've never stolen money from the company. I just need the money to invest. Whenever there is interest, I pay it in full. That's enough to commit the crime of abusing trust to appropriate property. Don't make it too important, Michael. I'm sorry for doing the wrong thing to you. Do you want to move back to the sales room? Or can I give you a raise? All you need to do is ignore that money and delete all the proofs you have. So, the person who's looked down on me, humiliated me, and bullied me needs my help. Why in the world would I help someone like that? Oh, please, Michael. If you report to the company, I will lose my job. Please, Michael, I still have to take care of my family. So, when you bully others, do you think of their families? Or do you need money? What about I share one-third of the money I take from stocks? No, Isaac, I won't take it. Are you considering the amount to be little? Then I will share with you a half. It's equal to the salary you earn in a year. Think about it, Michael. Think of what you can do with that money. Stop it, Isaac. I won't take that money. If I accept, we will become your accomplices. Michael, please. You would never speak to me like that, usually. Please go back to being the kind-hearted, helpful Michael you were before. Oh, am I not learning what you taught me very well? Thanks to your dedicated guidance. <laughs> so tomorrow, I'll come to the company to report everything you do to me, and your deeds that you appropriated the company's property. And I will meet you to give you my letter of resignation. I'm sorry, Michael. Please give me another chance. Please don't do that to me. I think you should go to bed early. Tomorrow is going to be an important day. <laughs> Bye. No, please no. Michael, please don't do that to me. Then I heard that Isaac was fired from the company and had to repay all the money he had appropriated. Because he was blacklisted, no company hired him anymore. Now he became unemployed and locked himself in the house all day. 
After leaving this company, I found a new job with a sociable environment and a very good boss. My life also becomes more fulfilling when my family is about to welcome a new member.